So for the eight possible inputs, and if you imagine the sequence of input and what inputs you apply, so the propagation delay may vary. For example, if it was a zero here, and if you applied a zero, like previously it was one, so the output would change. So this would get lower propagational delay compared to you changing A input. So propagational delay for some input would be T1 minus T0. So it's always better to use the critical part delay. Critical part delay is the maximum of propagational delays. Okay, so for example, this can have a prop propagation delay of one picosecond. One picosecond. And this can have 0.5 picosecond. And this can have 0.5 picosecond. So the total would be like the propagational delay of these gates and the wires included. Okay, so propagation delay for one input you can calculate, but the maximum propagational delay it gives you critical part delay. What do you mean maximum propagation delay? You said propagation delay is T1 minus T0, it's just one minus. Yes. So assume this. You apply oh, this actually. Yes. Okay. So you have zero, 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 right? So in order for this zero to propagate, it has to go through this gate, this gate, this gate, this gate. Okay. For A to propagate to output. So if you change A and if you want to see the change in output, you need the A input needs to go through four stages of combinational delay. But if you just change, like keeping this A, B constant, and if you change the next input to 0, 0, 1, then it has to go through only this XOR gate. So it has to go through only one part, one combinational part delay. So if you measure the propagational delay for this input, you will find it much lesser than your predecessor, the uh, predecessor input. Okay, so usually the software gives you what's the maximum uh, combinational part delay and all. So this will be your, so propagation delay, if you calculate for a few inputs, that should be okay, but it's always better to use the maximum of propagation delay, that which is nothing but critical part delay. So if you use any RTL tools or any uh, CAD software regs, uh, a CAD software, so they, they do calculate this propagational part delay. Now, assume that you put a flip-flop here. So let me change the color. So this is a flip-flop. And this is a flip-flop. So what you essentially did was, so we broke up the combinational path into two separate combinational paths. So this is C1 and this is C2. So maximum of these two combinational path, this will be the critical part delay. So for example, this is two picoseconds. Let's assume like ignoring the wire delays and this is just one picosecond. So your maximum operable frequency equal to one over critical part delay. So that is nothing but the maximum pro uh, propagational part delay of these two parts. So that will be two picoseconds. So one by one by two picoseconds. So you understood right now the difference between critical part delay, but for this now the propagational part delay would increase why the flip-flop let's say it has like 0.25 picoseconds and this flip-flop has 0.25 picoseconds for the uh the elemental propagational delay now if you add the total path so t0 to t1 so this was like uh, combinational only and with the flip-flops 
this equal to t0 minus t1 so however this propagational part delay would be greater than this one because of introduction of this element so when somebody asks propagation delay of this design so you calculate from the input to the output including the flip flops and everything so the only way to know is you perform simulation timing simulation you give some inputs like let's say you give 10 inputs and you calculate the propagational delay between like when you push the input and when you get the output so you measure the time difference there you go the maximum value you can just put it there because uh, you cannot possibly uh, simulate all the possible inputs right so just use some few 10 test vectors to show how much is the propagational part delay and then uh, put the maximum value as a propagation delay so in the coming labs yeah in the coming lectures we will learn how to use the cat tools to learn about this information to how to use the CAD tools to calculate this propagation delays and propagation delay probably would be calculated by waveform itself but critical part delay and maximum of the operable frequencies you will see in the coming graphs okay does that make sense yes My handwriting is so bad. Hopefully you guys can make sense of it. All right, thank you, Vinayaka. So one more question is how to make your do ready go high after your output stabilizes. See one way to know is let's say you know when your output is going to produce. Now you all have used some sort of state machine, right? Like you are counting to specific values and then 
giving it to this thing We're moving around the states so one more way is so let's see you have this combinational parts so this is your stop writing one So you have something like this. You have your shifter here. You have a XOR gate. You shift it out. And then you have that concatenation and other uh, feedback stuffs going on. So one easier way is, let's say you use a state machine, right? So you get your inputs here register it first like both a and b so it's always better to register your inputs and output before you throw it out or uh, take it into the systems it's easier because the devalid problem doesn't arrive then so let's say your registers so you take it your a and b in so use your controller to move this data to xor so you can merge the xor and this shifter in one state itself or again take through another register okay and then use your controller to feed it to this and probably if you want you can register here or you can directly feed in here so it doesn't matter and then when this output is produced like register it So now, all you need to do is, so in this controller, right? So in your controller here, so all you need to do is when data valid is one, so put it into this register, like move this to state. Okay, after that, move it to next state. And then after that, just move into next state and then move it to next state. So after this, so you can have like one empty state. So where since you have already registered it, right? So because it can be like 32 bit or 64 bit and because of the larger number of inputs, so sometimes there can be a little more glitches because of the larger number of uh, paths it can travel. So you can directly synchronize with this flip flop, the da data out ready, or else you can have an empty blank state to go like you update your d out here like you update the outputs here in le let's call this this was s0 s1 s2 s3 in s3 you update the outputs then in s4 you make it d out ready so if you make an s4 d out ready there cannot be any glitches you are going like your d out will definitely arrive after the data stabilizes and after this, you move back into your S0. So simple, right? 